Hey, welcome to Mini Beginner's Crash Course. My name is Lisa Jung, and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. This course is for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In Season 2, we're building a full-stack JavaScript app that could search for earthquake data stored in Elasticsearch. In the previous episode, we figured out how we want to transform this data before ingesting it into Elasticsearch. We also came up with a desired mapping to efficiently store and search data in Elasticsearch. In this episode, we'll set up Elasticsearch for data transformation and data ingestion. To do so, we'll create an ingest pipeline to transform the retrieved data from the API. We'll also create an index called earthquakes with a desired mapping. Let's talk about the relevant resources for this episode. All the links to these resources are included in the description box. In this episode, we're talking a lot about ingest pipelines. So if you want more info, check out the Elasticsearch documentation. Later in this episode, we'll be using this mapping to create the earthquakes index. If you want to try this out on your own, this mapping is included in the blog part six, step four. Before we get started, let's talk about the data journey for our app. We're building an app where users could search for earthquake data stored in Elasticsearch. In the next episode, we'll set up our server to retrieve the data from the USGS API and send the data to Elasticsearch Ingest Pipeline. Ingest Pipeline is used for data transformation. It consists of a series of configurable tasks called processors, and each processor performs a specialized task. For example, it could remove fields, extract values from text, enrich your data, and etc. Each processor runs in the order you set them up, and they make specific changes to the incoming documents. After the processors have run, Elasticsearch will add the transform documents into the earthquake index we'll create. Now, our ingest pipeline will be used to transform the data retrieved from the API. Before we create an ingest pipeline, let's review what changes we want to make to the data. We want to remove the unnecessary info from the retrieved data, change the Unix epoch time and the field time to human readable timestamp, and create a coordinates.lat and coordinates.long fields as shown here. Next, we'll create an ingest pipeline. Ingest pipelines can be created and managed via Kibana's ingest pipelines feature or the ingest APIs. Now, we'll be using Kibana to create this pipeline. From the Kibana homepage, click on the Stack Management option. From the Stack Management page, click on the Ingest Pipelines option. Then click on the Create Pipeline option, then select the New Pipeline option from the drop-down menu. You can name your pipeline to whatever it makes sense to you. For this series, I named mine Earthquake Data Pipeline. Now click on the Add a Processor option, then you should see a following pop-up menu. Our first task is to remove the fields that we don't need from the retrieved data. So here's an example of an earthquake object from the USGS API. Here, we have a sample document with the desired fields that we want to store in Elasticsearch. As you can see, the API earthquake object has additional info we don't need. And by comparing the two, we can identify the fields that we want to remove from the retrieved data. Now, I've listed these fields here. To remove these fields, we could use the Remove Processor. From the pop-up menu, type in the Remove in the search bar then click on the Remove Processor. Elasticsearch will display the following menu. In the Fields section, we'll add the names of the fields that we want to remove. So type in the name of the field and press Enter, and you'll see that the field name has been added. In the same box, repeat the same process to remove all the fields that we wish to remove. Then click on the Ignore Missing option then click on the Add button, and you'll see that the Remove Processor has been added to the pipeline. Next, we'll change the Unix epoch time in the field time to human readable timestamp as shown in the search results card. Now, in order to make this change, you should use the date processor, and the date processor converts time from one format to another. So from the same page, click on the Add Processor option, 
On the processor section, type in date and click on the date option from the drop down menu. In the field section, type the name of the field that we wish to convert, which is time. In the format section, we'll specify the desired date formats. And the format shown in the search results card is called Unix MS. So type this into this section and hit enter. Then click on the add button to add a date processor to the ingest pipeline. And you'll see that the date processor has been added to the pipeline. Now, when the data goes through the date processor, the content of the field time will be converted to the Unix MS format, then stored in a new field called at timestamp. And after this process is finished, we do not need the original field time. Therefore, we'll remove the field time after data goes through the date processor. From the same page, click on the add a processor option. Under the processor section, type in remove and hit enter. Under the field section, type in time and hit enter. Then click on the ignore missing option. Then click on the add button. And you'll see that the remove processor for the field time has been added. Next, we'll create a coordinates.lat and coordinates.long fields as shown here. From the same page, click on the Add a Processor option. Under the Processor section, type in Rename and hit Enter. It'll display this pop-up menu. Under the Field section, type in Latitude. Under the Target Field section, type in Coordinates.lat. This step will rename the field Latitude in the incoming data to Coordinates.lat. Then click on the Ignore Missing option. Then click on the Add button to add this processor. You'll see that the rename processor for the field Latitude has been added to the pipeline. Next, we'll repeat the same process to add a rename processor to rename the incoming field Longitude to coordinates that long. Once this process is done, you'll see that a rename processor for the field Longitude has been added to the pipeline. Okay, we have now added all the necessary processors to transform our data. Before creating this pipeline, just make sure the order of the processors are listed in the order you want them to run. These processors run sequentially. Next, we'll create the earthquake data pipeline by clicking on the Create Pipeline button. And you'll see that the earthquake data pipeline has been created here. If you scroll down on the processor section, you'll see the list of processors we have just added to this pipeline. Next, we'll create an index called earthquakes with a desired mapping. And we'll accomplish this step using the Kibana Dev Tools. So click on the menu icon, scroll down the drop down menu and click on Dev Tools. And you should see the Kibana console on your screen. Now in the left panel, paste the desired mapping. This could be found in blog part six, step four. Afterwards, click on the green arrow to send the request. And Elasticsearch will create an index called earthquakes with the desired mapping we defined here. In this episode, we created an ingest pipeline to transform the retrieved data. We also create an index called earthquakes with the desired mapping, so the transformed data could be indexed there. In the next episode, we'll set up our server to retrieve the data from the USGS API and send the data to Elasticsearch Earthquake Data Pipeline. Once the data is transformed, the transformed data will be ingested into the Earthquakes Index. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.